Hello everyone! I hope all of you are having a fantastic day and are now ready to learn something. Today, we are finishing up the math curriculum based test for our 2022 preparations for our PEP exam. But first, I have a message for all of you who are watching and subscribing to our channel. Now let's jump in. So this is our first item for today, but it's actually item 9 on our test paper. So make sure that you go and watch part 1. Item 9. The line segment below represents 4 holes. Mario correctly selected point Q to represent an estimation of 220% on the line segment. The question is, which of the following could not be his reason for choosing this point? Let's plug in the information that we have. Point Q is 220%. Point 1 is 100%. That is the first complete hole. Point 2 is 200%. That's the second hole. Point 3 is 300%, the third hole, and point 4 is 400%, the fourth hole. Alright, so now we're going to see which of our options could not be his reason for selecting point Q to be 220%. A says 220% is just a little over two holes. That's correct, right? Option B, any random point between 2 and 3 would be correct. This is not correct, guys. And if you are not sure why this is not correct, just check out part 1 of this two-part video series. So here we have our answer. Our answer is B. We don't need to go any further because we found our answer. This one is not true. We can still look at point C and D just to confirm that we are absolutely correct. Option C says point P is too close to 1 and point R is too close to 3. Point P, yes, that is true. And that is true. And then option D, point Q is approximately one-fifth the way between 2 and 3, which is 20% more. That is also true. If you don't see why B is our answer, check out part 1 of this video series. Let's move on to the next item. Item 10. The diagram below shows two similar rectangles. Question. What is the ratio of side AB to side EF? Alright, so Thank let's find our points on our diagram. So this is AB, this is EF. So we want to know what is the, the size of AB compared to the size of EF. So let's let's count our, our little squares. AB is 3 to EF is 6. Look at our options guys. None of our options has 3 to 6. So how will we know what is our correct answer? Well just like fractions, ratios can be simplified. So since we have 3 here and we know that we can readily see that 3 is a factor of 6. So all we need to do is simplify this guys. So this we can change this ratio 3 to 6 to 1 to 2. And this is our answer. C. C is our answer. And again it could not be 2 to 1 because of how the sizes that we are comparing are mentioned. Again, if you guys have any problem understanding what is in front of you, how I just solved this, check out part 1. In part 1, we covered a lot of percentages and ratios. These are the questions that the ministry sent out to help PEP students with their preparation for this year. So make sure you check out that video guys because the details are in that video. Let's move on to the next item which would be item 11. Item 11. 
which information is enough to determine the perimeter of a rectangle let's look at our options a the length of the diagonal b the area of the rectangle c the size of the angles d the length of the sides all right so right away i see the answer the answer is the length of the sides d this question is testing your knowledge on how to determine the perimeter of polygons so this is something that you guys need you need to know let me see how best i can help you to see why it could not be the other three options well first of all the diagonal is this way and knowing the length of a diagonal in a rectangle is not enough information to tell you the length of the perimeters of that rectangle you would also need to know either the area of the rectangle or the the length of the rectangle diagonal is a bit more complicated so i'm not going to get into the formula for determining that what about the area of the rectangle so to get the area of a rectangle we need to multiply the width by the height the area alone is not enough to tell us what the perimeter is because rectangles with can have different perimeters and i'm going to show you that quickly so here we have our rectangle let's say this side is five uh five meter let's just use meter this side is two meter the area for this is 10 meter right Let's draw another rectangle. This time, right here, the, the width is 10 meter and the height is one meter. The area is also 10 meters, but these two rectangles have different perimeters. How do we know what the perimeter of a rectangle is? It's the width plus the height times two, or really just the sum of all of the sides. So for our first rectangle, the perimeter would be 14, 14. And for our second rectangle, the perimeter would be 22. As you see there, we have the same area, but the perimeters are different. All right? So that is wrong. And then option C, the size of the angles. Well, every rectangle has four 90 degree angles. So this could not be correct. All right, you guys, I hope that was clear. Let's move on to item 12. There are 36 students in Bella's class. 16 of them are boys and 20 of them are girls. Bella thinks that the ratio of boys to girls could be written as 36 to 16. Bella's teacher says she's incorrect. What two ratios could be used to correctly represent the relationship? That is the relationship of boys to girls. So what are our options? A, 4 to 5, B, 9 to 4, C, 8 to 10, D, 27 to 12. So this is Bella's answer. But we know that Bella's answer is incorrect. So let's put in the correct answer first. The ratio of boys to girls is 16 to 20. Because there are 16 boys and 20 girls. The amount of boys compared to the amount of girls is 16 to 20. A ratio gives us the size comparison of two things in a set. In this case, the set is the total number of students in the class. So, we are not seeing this in our options. So, what we need to do is find another way of writing 
16 to 20 actually two other ways as I mentioned earlier just like fractions ratios can be simplified they can be written in a simplified format as long as you maintain the portions the size proportions so the amount of boys compared to the amount of girls should always be the same the size should always remain the same so what is another way that we can write this well 4 is a factor of both 16 and 20 so let's use 4 4 4 times 4 is 16 And 5 times 4 is 20. So there we have our first answer, A. So that's 4 being the factor of 16 and 20. Another factor of 16 and 20 is 2. 2 times what number gives you 16? 8. 2 times what number gives you 20? 10. There we have the, the second answer. Again, if you guys don't see how these two options are our answer check out part one i explain in detail what ratio is and how to solve problems involving ratios and i just want to mention you guys that this is the same paper that we're doing from part one and so far in this in this video we already covered i think two questions on ratios and we did quite a few in the previous one this is telling me that PEP students really need to understand ratios and how, how they work and how to represent information in a set in a ratio format. All right, let's move on. If that shape there represents 25% of a shape, which two figures below could be the complete shape? All right, so the complete shape meaning 100%. That means our complete shape has four, four of this, since this is 25%, and we need four 25% to make 100%. What other information do we have? The question is asking us which two figures could be the complete shape. So. As long as the two figures have four of these, then we have our answer. It does not matter how the figures are organized. All right? So let's look at them. So A is correct. A has four of that figure. B is also correct. So we have a, we solve our problem already, guys, because we, we're seeing four of the same figure. But you... What, what this problem is really testing is your ability to, to identify a figure when it is positioned in different ways. C could not be right because this part here is clearly not matching the size of our figure. Same thing with D. That size, D, this part here is too big. Alright, so there you have it guys. Let's move on to the next item. Item 14. Tony is using a triangular prism to make the top of a toy house. He wants to know how much cardboard he needs to build the roof. Indicate whether the information in the first column is necessary or not necessary in order to make this decision. Alright, so let's look at our information. The number of edges. Okay, so these are the edges of our prism here. So knowing, knowing the number of edges, guys, will not will give us no information as to the size of our, our roof. So that's not necessary. That information is not necessary. What about the area of each triangle? Yes, we need to know the area of the two triangles in this, in our prism. So that is necessary. We also need to know the length of each of our rectangles. That's unnecessary information. What about the number of faces? Yes, we need to know this. So these are our faces. We need to know how many faces our prism should have. So 
this is also necessary. This problem is really testing your knowledge of solid geometrical models. So this is something that you guys need to know. So you have to, to review your notes on that. If, if what I did wasn't clear, if you're not seeing why I selected these answers, then please look it up, all right? Let's move on to our last item. Item 15. Shade the appropriate circle to tell whether each set described is finite or infinite. So this question is testing whether or not you know what the words finite and infinite mean. Finite basically means having a limit. So when something is finite, there is an end to it. Infinite, however, has no end. There's no limit to it. So let us look at our descriptions. The set of marbles in a tank. Of course, that is finite because we can count that, right? That has a limit, that has an end. The set of counting numbers. You know that this, this has no limit. This is infinite because you can count from now till forever and still keep counting. What about the set of hair on the human body? This is finite. It's a lot, but it's finite. So there we have it, you guys. I'm so happy that we went through all of our 2022 pep papers. Make sure that you check out the other subject areas that have already been posted. Math was our last paper. Check out the playlists that are already on this channel. Check the link in the description to get more resources. All the best guys and make sure you come back, alright?